Hello. We're in Paris, and Paris was very special to Posey Simmons. She came here in 1962 as a 17-year-old student to study French civilization, and she fell in love with Paris and French culture. Here's a drawing she made as a student uh, of the, the rooftops of Paris. And while she was here, she also fell in love with the cartooning traditions of France. She had grown up in the UK in the countryside, and in her family home, there was a huge library, which she was exploring from a very early age. And it's here she discovered the cartoons of Ronald Searle, famously in Punch, but also famous for Nigel Molesworth, the naughtiest boy in school, which inspired Harry Potter and Hogwarts. And then another big inspiration shortly after were the American comic books, which her older brothers passed on to her, which included uh, stories of horror and crime. And from this, she very quickly began drawing her own comics. We have an example here uh, called The Red Dagger, drawn when she was around eight or nine years old. Uh, it's quite a dark, somber mystery story with murder and intrigue. So from the very beginning, she had a, a very rich imagination and was making writing and drawing at the same time, making her own comics. After Paris, Posey came to study uh, art in London and was very influenced by pop art, as we can see from these drawings. And even while she was a student, she was already getting commissions. Her first paid job was making this dust jacket design for a novel. But her career really took off in the early 70s, working for the British press, and especially for the Guardian newspaper. It was there that she would have a long career drawing for, on the pages, the page devoted each week to women and women's issues and rights and concerns. And it was here she developed a cast of characters uh, who became beloved by readers for over 10 years. And we have here the first two comic strips which she produced in 77, introducing her cast of characters. The three women, uh, all of them individuals who were given their own life and stories through the strips. And we have an example here of the kind of thing that she would do. Here, this story is called The World Turned Upside Down and imagines a typical office scene, but with the role, the sexual roles reversed. Instead of men being sexist, it's women who are being sexist. And it is all, of course, a fantasy and dream of a, a long-suffering secretary with a very chauvinist boss. From the characters Posey created for The Guardian, she developed the very first graphic novel in Britain in 1981 called True Love, which is a, a story about a secretary who falls in love with, with her boss, um, but who then gets revenge by falling in love with the most handsome man in the world, Cliff Duff. True Love really was a landmark in British graphic novels. We're now looking at Posey's second big career as a children's book author and illustrator, working for the first time in full color. And on her first book, Fred, in 1987, she imagines the secret life of a domestic cat. Uh, her owners, to a little boy and a girl, think that Fred must be the most boring cat in the world. They, that they discover after the cat dies that he has a secret life. This is the funeral being held, which, where the whole neighborhood becomes filled with cats. And the great revelation is that Fred is not just an ordinary cat, he is the Elvis Presley of the cat world. He is a superstar. And this story by Posey was adapted into an animated film, which was nominated for an Oscar. And it ends with a celebration of, of Fred's career and beautiful images of the children and the cat world having a big feast from the dustbins. Among Posey's other children's books is Baker Cat, produced in 2004. We're lucky to have her sketchbooks and her large preparatory drawings for this lovely children's book. And here we can see Baker Cat with his bosses. Baker Cat works for a, a, a nasty human couple who exploit him terribly. He only gets a tiny, tiny breakfast. Um, but here he starts to conspire with the mice to develop a, a clever plot where he, the more mice he catches, the more food he gets. So they actually start to produce fake mouse tails, and as a result, the mice get all the food they want to eat, and so does Baker Cat. It's a lovely conclusion with the baker's wife getting attacked by all the mice, and the revenge is, is sweet. This is a beautiful uh, comment, really, on uh, workers rising up against their masters. Posey Simmons has also adapted a, a short story by Hilaire Belloc, a cautionary tale about what happens if you tell lies. It's the story of Matilda, who told such dreadful lies and was burned to death. 
which shows how uh, Matilda is a very mischievous girl who will actually have a t suffer a terrible fate. Here is where the dog sets off the fire, and then here is when the fire engines roar to try and save her, but they will come too late. A caution tale with definitely a macabre atmosphere reminiscent of Charles Adams and his Adams family. So here we are now in the biggest exhibition gallery uh, devoted to Posey Simmons' remarkable graphic novel trilogy, three great works that began in 1999 with Gemma Bovary. These were serialized in The Guardian, and they allowed Posey to do longer, complete stories inspired by, in all three cases, by works of literature. But she makes them her own. These are not just pure adaptations. Here she took the story of Madame Bovary, by Gustave Flaubert and modernized it to become Jebba Movery, a story of a woman who, is, um, who wants to live a dream, has a dream of living in Normandy uh, and, and, and escaping from the dull life she has in London. And what Percy does with the pages is revolutionary too, because she combines not only the conventional panels and balloons of, of bon dessinée, of comics, <clears throat> with text and different forms of text, typography, she makes the, the reading of the page much more rich uh, and it really just has changed the graphic novel completely. This became her first big hit and became a movie uh, as well. For her second graphic novel, Posey Simmons had the chance to work in full colour and she took another 19th century novel, Thomas Hardy's Far From the Madding Crowd, and updated that to the English countryside. Here, looking very peaceful, but as you may notice, there's a, a police car running through it, a siren blaring. Uh, her heroine, Tamara Drew, appears for the first time in this page, looking beautiful, of course, and, and surrounded by uh, men who uh, have various desires for her. And she is really what, uh, the character that ignites a whole turbulent storyline in this English village. But alongside Tamara's central role, there are other characters who are important. There are two girls, two teenage girls here, who are stuck in an English village where there is nothing. There is no bus services. They are trapped. They are from the more working class side, and their storyline uh, is paralleled with the more upper class, a literary world of the Tamara Drew inhabits. And her techniques, uh, again, combine uh, images and passages of text. But where they really come together, and Posey is the most happy with, with, with these pages, are where she's able to relate the story completely in pictures. This is an, an entirely visual sequence um, of great power set uh, towards the end of the story. I won't, can't reveal any more because it's, it's a murder mystery. <laughs> it's a masterpiece and made into a film directed by Stephen Frears. So it took 11 more years for Posey to complete her third graphic novel, Cassandra Dark. For this book, she was inspired by A Christmas Carol, the famous Christmas story by Charles Dickens. And again, she brought it up to date and reflected the enormous divide in uh, British society and in London between the rich and the poor. Uh, Cassandra Dark is a disgraced art dealer uh, who lives in a very comfortable lifestyle but has that shattered when uh, she discovers that her live-in um, helper has left some clues to a murder. And uh, her, her character, she's a, a misanthrope. She's a, not at all a, a, an appealing character. She's like Scrooge in Christmas Carol, but of course as, as a woman. But we do come to empathize with her plight and sympathize with her hopes. These are the, the clues, the tantalizing clues that have been left behind by the murder victim. And Cassandra Dark decides that she must try and solve this mystery herself. She ends up having to travel to other parts of London that she's never seen before, the lower class areas, the outer areas, the poor districts. And by the end, Cassandra becomes uh, a, a much deeper and, and transformed person. And we come now to the last gallery, bringing Posey Simmons' work up to date. And in starting off with a, a section devoted to literary life, a series of one-page features in the Guardian's literary mag section. These ranged from single panel cartoons to one-page comic strips. Here, for example, showing a, a woman writer um, as she transforms graphically writing a, a, an erotic sequence, a purple passage in her novel. And here we have another commission. This is for Le Point in French. And it was a two-page comic about Posey's love of London, the things, her home city for almost all her adult life. 
Uh, more recently, Posey's made a drawing here, uh, an affectionate one, I should add, um, showing King Charles I uh, in some very elaborate underwear. This was done as a charity book to coincide with the coronation of King Charles II. Uh, and here we have some drawings of Theresa May's shoes. Posey is an great observer of fashion. And we conclude with an exclusive because Posey is drawing every day and she has two sketchbooks on the go right now within which we can see the glimpses of her next graphic novel, In Gestation. So do come in and visit this exhibition. It, it covers her entire career and even her future career. <laughs>